Hey guys, thanks for clicking on me. Lucy and I are here today to show you how I build my LED resin embedded cornhole board. I have a set here behind me that I built probably about a year ago. So hopefully after you're done watching this video, you too can build a set of LED resin embedded cornhole boards. So with that said, let's get to the build, okay? First thing you want to do is mark the top of your board. Flip the plywood over and now we're going to make a centering jig that we will use a few times during the build. Find yourself a piece of 1x4 that is about 12 inches long and drill holes on both ends of it. Make sure to use short screws as not to screw through the top of your board. Screw the board to the back of the plywood centered over the hole. Now flip the plywood over and find yourself a small piece of half inch material and place it in the hole on the 1x4. Secure this piece down with some brad nails or some short screws. The reason we're making this jig is to find the center of the hole. Now measure from the side 12 inches and make your marks. And then from the top of the plywood measure down 9 inches and make your marks. Now grab a straight edge and connect your marks. Now you will have two intersecting lines. Where they intersect will be the center of the hole. Next mark the bottom of the hole at the center point, 12 inches. We'll use this mark later. Now measure out 3 quarters of an inch from one side of the hole. And do the same thing on the other side, measure out 3 quarters of an inch. Now grab your compass and adjust it to ensure that it meets up on both sides of the marks you just made. Now draw your outer circle around the hole. Now measure up from the bottom of the board 8 inches on one side and 8 inches up from the other side. Once your marks are made, connect those marks with the mark you made at the bottom of the center of the hole. This will give us our V-shaped pattern. Now measure out 3 quarters of an inch from both sides of the V lines you just made. If you're seeing a pattern develop, you're correct. All of the channels we are making will be 3 quarters of an inch wide. These 3 quarter inch channels will be where we embed the LEDs in the resin. Now let's finish measuring and marking our 3 quarter inch channels on the sides of the board. Now that we're done marking up all the channels that we will route out later, let's prepare for the next step. Remove the centering jig, but hold on to it because we'll be using it a few more times later during the build. Grab a couple of 1x4s and let's build our box for the boards. Measure and cut your pieces to size and start assembling your box. Use wood glue at each one of the corners. I then use brad nails at each of the corners. You can use pocket holes if you want, but since I wasn't building a dance floor, brad nails will work just fine. Now that we're done making the box, apply a liberal amount of wood glue on the top of the box. Now place the half inch plywood on top of the box. Once it is flush and square, clamp it down, then nail it down. Now flip the boards over and cut a piece of 1x4 that fits in the center of the box. Nail it in place. Doing this will give it more support and cause the boards to be less bouncy. Now cut a 1x4 into four 16 inch pieces. We will now make our legs. Measure down one and three quarter inches from the top and then measure in one and three quarter inches from the sides. Connect your marks. At the intersecting line is where we're going to drill our hole 
for the legs. Adjust your compass to one and three quarter inches and mark the half circle at the top of your legs. Now chop off both of the corners as close to the line as possible. Next, at the disc sander, sand off the rest of the material to the pencil line. Using a 3 8 inch drill bit, go ahead and drill your hole at the intersecting lines. Repeat this step to the remaining three legs. Take the legs over to the boards and position them in place. Now grab a 3 quarter inch spacer and place it on the back wall of the box. Butt the legs up against a 3 quarter inch spacer and drill your holes. Once the hole is drilled, put in your 3 8 inch carriage bolt followed by a flat washer, lock washer, and 3 8 inch nut. Now repeat these steps with the remaining three legs. Now let's set the 12 inch regulation height for the cornhole boards. Grab a bucket or anything handy to prop up the cornhole board, using spacers if needed to get the height up to 12 inches. I used a bucket and a piece of half inch material to get my boards to 12 inches. I fully swung out the leg and butted it up against a level table and I made a mark. Remove the legs and take them to the chop saw and cut the legs at the marked line. Now grab the other leg and flush it up underneath and make the same cut. You will now have two identical legs. Now reattach them to the cornhole board with the carriage bolts and hardware. Flip the board over and well bam, you have a 12 inch high board. Thank you ma'am. Next I cut another piece of 1x4 to use as a support piece for my legs. I did drill in pocket holes on both ends of the board. Next I use pocket hole screws and glue and I secured it to the legs. Now that we're done completing our cornhole boards, remove the legs and put them aside. Now cut a piece of 3 quarter inch common board to 10 inches by 10 inches. Apply a good amount of glue on the bottom side of the plywood around the hole. Center the piece of common board directly over the hole and tack it down. Next, drill pilot holes around the hole, staying at least one inch away from the hole. Screw it down to the plywood. Making sure the screws you use are short enough so that they don't pop out of the top of the plywood. Put the board back over and grab a piece of half inch material and tack it down. Once again, we're gonna mark the center of the hole. Drill a pilot hole at the center point and using a 6 inch hole saw, drill a hole through the 3 quarter inch common board. Once done, flip the board back over and let's grab that jig again. You know the process, we're going to mark the center of the hole once again. We have our center mark, grab your circle jig for your router and attach it to the center mark of the hole. Adjust your router to cut at the outer circle pencil mark that we made earlier. Make sure to use a 3 quarter inch straight bit on your router. Once you've made all your adjustments, let's start routing out the 3 quarter inch circle. I ended up plunging down about 3 or 4 passes until I got to the perfect depth. I ended up going past the half inch plywood and I ended up cutting into the common board about an eighth of an inch. This will ensure that when the LEDs are placed on their side, that they will be deep enough in the channel that the resin will go over the top of the LEDs and cover them completely. Now let's measure and clamp down some straight edges that we will use as a fence for our router and begin routing out our channels. I plunged in about 3 eighths of an inch making multiple shallow passes until I got to the 3 8 inch depth. Now it's 
time to make marks in every location that the LEDs will make a turn. Using a pencil, make those marks in the channels as I did here. Using a half inch straight bit, let's plunge down a little bit deeper. This will ensure that the LEDs will have that much more extra room to be pushed into the channels. Now it's time to dry fit your LEDs into the channel, marking every location where the LEDs make a turn. Grab a marker and mark those locations on the LED strip. It's at these locations where you're going to want to remove the clear rubber waterproof material from the LED strip. Using an X-Acto knife, carefully score and cut the clear rubber and remove it off the LED strip. Take extra care during this step as you are peeling it off the strip. Now using your origami skills, carefully and gently fold the strip to make the 90 degree turn taking extreme care not to create an open in the copper foil. Do this to all the locations where the LED strip makes a turn. Once done, remove the LEDs and put them aside for later. Resin has a way of pulling and sucking out every bit of air that's trapped between the layers of plywood. So it's very important to seal your wood first. So please do this step first. Flip your board over and route out about five or six pockets that are the same depth as the channel you routed on the top side. Using different wood sealer products, apply those sealers to the inside of the pockets. I use different combinations of sealers on some of the pockets. Just remember to leave one of the pockets bare with no sealer. This will be your control. Now fill in each one of the pockets with the resin and wait a few hours for the results. Here are the results of my test, and wow, was I lucky I did this test before pouring the resin on the top side. As you can see, the pocket without the sealer at all was a foamy mess and would have destroyed hours of work. The results varied on each of the test pockets. There were some good results and some bad results and some very bad results. So based upon the results of my test, I decided to use spar urethane and sand and sealer. I brushed on the spar urethane in the channel as well as the walls of the channel. I applied two coats allowing the first coat to dry thoroughly before applying the second coat. I then applied sand and sealer to the top surface on both sides of the 3 quarter inch channel. I applied two coats of sand and sealer allowing the first coat to dry thoroughly before applying the second coat. Now drill a hole in the channel where you're going to feed the power side of your LEDs to the underside of the board. Remove the backing from the adhesive on the back side of the LEDs and begin sticking down your LEDs. Using a piece of 0.03 inch plexiglass, cut a strip that is the circumference of the circle and about 2 inches tall. Drill holes on the bottom of the strip that are 1 inch apart and position the strip inside of the 6 inch hole. Now using thumbtacks, put the thumbtacks in each of the drilled holes and hammer them in with a small hammer. Now grab a small tube of clear silicone and apply a thin bead where the plexiglass and the wood meet. Using your finger, push in the silicone into the crevice. This will ensure when you pour your resin in this area that there will be no leaks. Since we have the silicone out, let's go ahead and fill in the hole that we drilled for the LEDs. Make sure to apply a good amount, then flip the board over and fill it in from the backside. Better to be safe than sorry. Finally, it's time to pour the resin. But first, make sure your board is level in all directions. I decided to do the resin pour in two steps. I mixed up one small batch of one-to-one -one resin, stirring slowly to avoid making bubbles. I decided to pour just enough resin to fill in the channel halfway. Doing this will totally cover the LED strip. This will serve two purposes. 
If there is any outgassing or formation of bubbles and foam, it will be hidden in this layer. And secondly, the hardened resin will hold down the LEDs because sometimes the LEDs have the tendency to unstick and float up in the resin. As you can see, our test results proved to be true and there was little to no bubbles being produced in the resin. Better to be safe than sorry. I mixed up another batch of resin to finish filling in the channel to the top, but this time I will add a silver pearl pigment to the resin, which will give it an opaque and iridescent look when dry. Slowly and carefully pour the resin into the channel, taking extra care not to over pour and have the resin flood to the top of the plywood. If you do over pour, take the time and push the resin back into the channel with a business card or a popsicle stick. It's better to deal with the over pour now rather than to wait until the resin hardens. It's a bear to sand off hardened resin. Once the resin gets to a certain thickness consistency, this will take a few minutes, grab a toothpick and begin to swirl in some patterns into the resin. Doing this to the resin will make the iridescent pigment pop when the light reflects off of it when it dries. Now it's time to remove the plexiglass form from the hole. Remove the thumbtacks and pull out the plexiglass. I'm using an LED strip that works with Alexa. You can either turn it on with the controller that I mounted underneath, or there's a Bluetooth app that can turn your boards on and off. This LED strip is sound activated and will react to the sound of the music, and will also splash colors when the bag hits the board. How cool is that? Now let's attach a 10 hour battery power pack, and let's dress this baby up and get her ready for some play.